First of all, I give glory to the Almighty God for what happened to me about a week ago when on my own I decided to uh, go for tests for COVID-19 after a series of my aides were positive. And uh, unfortunately, I was positive. And I decided to isolate myself. And by the grace of God, yesterday, when a repeat test was done after my medication, I was negative. And so I am negative. Let all of you not be afraid that uh, <laughs> I will contract it <laughs> to you. That will not be your portion. And so I'm here today to appreciate the Almighty God, appreciate the Deputy Governor and members of my council who have heard fought on my behalf, ensuring that things work well. We were still running government together because on visual, on telephone, on chat, on WhatsApp, and text messages, we were able to communicate to ourselves. And I thank God that things have gone on very well during my absence. This country belongs to all of us. And the federal government, the presidency, must act fast because time is going from north, west, northeast, north central, southwest, southeast, south south. There is general insecurity. And this is being prepared by his men. I want to repeat again, I have made it a petition to the presidency and to all security agencies before that if they want peace, Mayat Yala must be arrested. These are people who have owned up. They have taken responsibility that they have killed, they maimed, they rape, and do all sorts of atrocities. And yet their leadership is in Abuja and nobody is confronting them. And until these people are arrested. When I talked, I was being castigated. I was being vilified. Nothing bad that was not said against me. I am this and that. But the reality is here. It is not just happening to Benue State today. It is happening to the entire country. Why is the federal government being silenced about this full animal? When will the federal government come out and criticize and arrest his men carrying AK-47. When are they going to do that? Are we second citizens in this country? What, 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 what gives Fulani man superior to any other person, to a tip man? I am not their slave. A Benue man is not a slave to any Fulani man in this country. And so federal government must do this. At a point in time, the federal government came out with a policy through the police that even those with license, then guns, double barrel and pump action should surrender to police. How many times have the presidency come out to condemn that Fulani men are carrying AK-47 all over the place? This is not correct. We stand for justice, equity and fairness. Whatever is happening to a Fulani man should also happen to any other person. That was why I, I called the federal government to license me and many others to, to have guns, to have AK-47 too. Because if I have my AK-47, a Fulani man is coming there, he knows that I have and he has, then we can uh, uh, fight each other. But you can't disarm me and arm a Fulani man. This is the point. So this is not right. The federal government is biased, is on fire. The failure in security is caused by federal government. And maybe what I perceived is that the president is not aware of this. Because if he were aware, he would stop it. I know General Muhammad Buhari retired as someone who is disciplined. But the people around him, psycho fans and mediocres, are not willing to let him know the pains that Nigerians are going through. 
Mr. President, in case you are listening to me, I want you to know that your people, Nigerians, you promised Nigerians that you will be fair to all. You say that you will, you will be for everybody and for nobody. And now it will appear that you are just for Fulani people because nothing is coming from you to give the people confidence that you are their president. You are the president of Federal Republic of Nigeria. You are not the president of Fulani. You are the president of everybody. And I owe you a duty as a stakeholder in this nation to let you know that what is going on is wrong. And this has the potentials of dividing this country, which will not be in the interest of anyone. Some of us believe in the unity of this country. We believe in leadership, that every leader comes by God. But we have you the responsibility to advise you when things are going wrong. It is not everything that I know as governor, but I depend on leftness. So you must depend on us, the whole country, those who are silent, are doing that as psychophants and mediocres. They are not willing to tell you the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mr. President, if anybody is deceiving you that all is well, it is not well with us here in Benue State. And what I can hear from other states, it is not well with Nigeria today. You must act fact before it is late. So this question of erasing those who oppose to full men. I also heard about the press statement issued by the presidency when the governor of Ondo issued a seven-day ultimatum that the Fulani should leave the forest. The presidency came out swiftly and said that it is wrong for him to say that. But when people are killed in Benway, killed in Ondo, killed in Ekiti, killed in Taraba, killed in Jigawa, killed in Zamfara, killed in all these places, but these health men, and they come out. There is one Fulani social cultural organization called FUNA, who came out and claimed responsibility and said that they are going to do more. They will mobilize Fulanis from all over the place to come and take over Nigeria, that it is their ancestral land. Presidency did not say anything. But they quickly ordered the arrest of a, an activist who stood up to speak and to work against his people. What else will you do? When you see your people being killed, you see your people's farm being raised down, being eaten off by herdsmen, what else will you do as a patriotic person of that community? What else will you do? It's just the same thing. The World Terrorist Index have destroyed Fulani as the fourth terrorist group in the world. But up to today, they have not cared, the federal government have not cared to declare herdsmen as terrorist organization. And they have gone for that to form Mieti Allah. Katon Hore, Mieti Allah, Katu Breeders, Mieti Allah, this one, Funam, that one. And federal government is romancing with them. And federal government comes out to defend them. Anything, time, something happens to them. But when they cause pains in the lives of other people, federal government will keep quiet. Federal government have gone ahead to ban iPod. Why can't they ban? What did iPod do? That they went ahead and banned them. This one that Fulanis are taking over everywhere under the watch of the presidency and they're not saying anything. What is the meaning of that? What are they trying to say? When you talk, they will come after you. Some people are afraid in this country to talk because if they come, EFCC will come after them. ICPC will come after them. Security agencies will come after them. They did that to me. And I went to court against them, and I won. They did that to me. They tried to impeach me. But by the grace of God, I survived. So these are the issues. So why do you need to go and talk about that man must be arrested? How about the full men that kill people, remove people's eyes, give people gradual killing? Have you made any attempt to arrest them? All these things are all over the place, on social media. 
And that is why I'm calling on Mr. President to act fast. Otherwise, it will be late and all of us will be consumed. We may wake up one day and we'll discover that we don't have a country called Nigeria again. And the only way to do it is for our leader, the president, to come in and act fast and behave like a president who is for everybody and is for nobody. But the way the president is behaving now is a contradiction to what he told us and the oath of office that he took.